John. John looked like the game of the year, huh? So let's 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 set this up. So as we're recording, bloop, 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 yeah. bloop, just texts like crazy going on here. Because I do all the stuff from my ridiculous iPhone 4. So I can't have like 47 screens. It's you know, it's the whole deal. I got this screen. And our crew, the people who, you know, people who work with us, the, the backbone, you know, the nervous system of uh, Luca Nation, we're having a conversation. It's hey, we should rekindle the Ja versus Luca debate without any real color to what that means, right? And that frustrates Andrew more than anything. He's like, what debate? What are you talking about? You know, what, what do you mean? Like, what are you even talking about? Have a tea. Yeah. Have an <laughs> angle. Have a tea. Well, the texts are really funny because it's like, hey, just what you should talk about it. And and well, what what should I talk about? Well, well, the fact that Ja is scoring. Um, that's not a take, you know, and, and just like, that's not a take, you know, the texts back are really funny. This isn't a take just cause you like Luca. It's not a take to be bad that John's getting some credit. That's not a take. You, you gotta give me something to say. So you have something to say? Ja had a good game. Ja had his career high, career high of any Grizzly ever. I mean, what, what's my take? I, I love watching the Grizzlies team play. They've turned a corner this year. They are a team. I mean, the Grizzlies historically haven't been a winning franchise. I think I think their best player probably was Zach Randolph. I, I love that guy, by the way. He's hilarious. But like, they're not a winning franchise. And to see a young team build straight up through the draft, right? And not like number one picks. Like, I mean, they got lottery picks, but Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Dylan Brooks, and uh, Ja, like. These were afterthoughts. And to see uh, Tyus, uh, Tyus Jones, he, he played at Duke, but he's their backup point guard. Like, just to see a team that came together, uh, everyone knows their role, and to be happy for each other, I, I don't I don't know what the take is. I, I'm happy for them. I, if I'm holding jaw cards, just from a profit standpoint, this might be a time to exit. You know, Definitely. One. If you're looking for my take, that's it. Sell. Sell cool. and sell now. And it doesn't have to be all of them. Let's say you have 10 jaw cards. You could take three, take, sell three, hold seven, because I still believe he has an incredible upside. But his cards are running. And people are, you know, it's funny. Alex, um, who creates our IG content, he had a card listed on my slabs, like a rare one. Um, and as soon as he hit that halftime shot, he said someone just scooped it and hit by it now. And that's how FOMO works, right? And I would say that the, the only, you know, difference between Luke and John. Luca already had his run. Luca cards have had their run. Luca was the darling of the hobby the last two years. Ja was in this weird place stuck between Trey and Luca. He was flashy and a good dunker, but there was the jury was out. Can he lead a winning team? Can he shoot? Can he do other things? And what I think he's proving to the market is, dude, this is a bona fide superstar and a one, two, or three MVP candidate. He now shoots the three a lot better. His free throw shooting shooting is a lot better. So, I mean, I, th- I think the only difference in Luca and Jaw, Luca had his run up during the bubble. Jaw's having his run now. But I, I listen. I love the take. I will tell you, uh, I was on Jaw before the season. Go back and listen to the recordings. I, I, I will ask people. I'm sure, there's some Jaw fans out there. But I, I, Jaw shouldn't have been as cheap as he was. But you have, have made a good comparison. It's not a take. But you're right. FOMO. That's how it works, right? And you have to balance upside. Right, and I know the jaw lovers are going to come out. The people are holding jaw, anybody who's holding jaw cards right now, no matter when you bought it, you are in profit. This is a high point, right? So if you sell your jaws right now, you will be in profit, right? Even if you bought last week, right? He's now had a run of really good games. The cards are more now than they were last week. If you bought early, if you bought last year, you bought whatever it is, the car, you are in profit right now. I cannot say if that's going to be the case tomorrow, next week, or next month. So what we do when we start to you know do an analysis of this is we look at what has happened in the past, right? If you forget what happened, you're doomed to repeat it. And the Luca analysis is a great one. That bubble shot. I'll compare, although look, remember, let me get back to it. I'll compare that shot yesterday, that 52 point game, to the bubble where you have with Luca that shot where he hit the one great shot, right? And, and he had the one playoff win, the three pointer. It was a top shot moment. It was a whole to do. And everything went nuts. His his prism base was 2,000. Now, I get it. There's been a lot of population increase since then, a lot of differences in the market, you name it. But the Jaws had a lot of population increase also on, on a lot of his cards. If you would have sold at that moment, when FOMO was at its peak on Luca, you'd be doing great. 
because the Luca market has only gone down since then. And you could even make an argument that going into the All-Star break, Luca had a week just like what Ja is having now. Both teams are middle of the West pack. The Grizzlies are a little higher. The Dallas a little lower. But if they happen to you know fall into a slot where they meet each other in the first round, Memphis isn't going to like that. And when you balance out all this fun stuff, is it possible that Ja has a couple more great games during this season? Sure. Could the cards go up another 10% from where they are now? Sure. Could he make the playoffs and even have a Luka-type playoff moment? 100%. Definitely sure, right? And and 10%, 15%, 20% from where they are now, there is some potential upside. But you have to balance that against the more likely downside that happens if he doesn't score 50 again. If the team falters a little bit and some of the other teams pass them in the West, right? And maybe they fall to now a road team. Or maybe they don't. And eventually, I believe, though, they will be eliminated from the playoffs. I do not think this is a team that is going to win the championship this year, right? So you're going to have an offseason after they've been eliminated where he doesn't have a chip and he's not playing. And even if he makes the championship, here's another comparison on the other side, right? On the other side, it's Joe Burrow. Right, a very similar comparison. Couple years in the league, young player, lots of expectations coming into the season. Not a huge, you know, talk about him by a couple people besides me. And he did great. And I was wrong on Burrow when the playoffs started. Right before the playoffs, I sold my one big Joe Burrow card. I did, and it went up. It had a 10 or 15% run when he went to the Super Bowl. But what happened? And this is a guy who went to the Super Bowl. He didn't win the Super Bowl. And the cards have retraced. 